Well, hello everybody. Happy Wednesday. Welcome Wednesday, right? Um, Wednesday, March 27th. We're almost out of March. And I tell you, I won't be sorry to see the end of it. Let's just see if we are all connected and if our Facebook friends are joining us yet. Yes, I see lots and lots of comments from our YouTube friends. Hello, Gina, Debbie, there's Jerry, Gail, Estella, um, BT, Shirley, a whole bunch of gals are already on YouTube. And here comes our Facebook friends, someone from snowy Western, Western Oregon, uh, rainy Maryland. Yeah, there's, uh, there's quite the variety of weather patterns going around. Uh, I was talking with people from home office today and it's super snowy there. We just got through a big dump. We've actually had almost triple the amount of snow we get in an average March. But now we're, we're into the plus temperatures and hopefully that'll all melt. Hello everyone, there's Carmel from Brisbane. Uh, Tennessee is joining us, Ruth in Tennessee. Uh, Yuma, Arizona, it, sorry, it already scrolled by, but I think it was in the 90s there, in Arizona. Uh, Michigan, uh, we've got Beverly's here, Rebecca from Ohio. Hello everybody, Bismarck, North Dakota, not very much snow there, sunny Georgia. Uh, there's Robin in Ohio, Barb from Minnesota. So welcome everybody. Um, oh, and Jenny's saying she's watching with her little two-year-old grandson and he's waving at you. So hi, we are so glad that our youngest member of our virtual crop, uh, you know, club is joining us. So welcome to everybody, young and old and everyone in between. So Hello, hello. Well, in case I, for, I haven't met you before, my name is Noreen Smith. I am the Product Development Creative Manager at Creative Memories. And every Wednesday, I get to be with you in order to share some fast and fun project ideas. So we always do something a little bit different, but we're glad you're here. And today we've got a jam-packed agenda. Whew, I'm out of breath already just thinking about it because we've got some new products that I wanna go over. I wanna give you a fast page formula for when you're using some frames because the two new collections that we've got uh, feature some frames and fun pockets and stuff like that. So we're gonna talk about that. Uh, we're also gonna talk about albums. We're gonna do a little bit of revisiting about albums because we are giving away 1,000 albums free. Yes, you heard it here. You may have received an email just a few minutes ago with some of the details, but I need you to stick around till the end of our episode because I'm going to share all about our thousand albums promo. So it's going to be a good one. And one of the reasons that we decided that we need to get some free albums out there into the world is because the scrapbooking world has been kind of kind of rocky lately. Uh, so many of you have heard the sad news that close to my heart, a venerable scrapbooking, card making and stamping company that's been around for 40 years uh, is closing their doors. So we know how sad that is. Uh, of course, CM went through something very similar in the, you know, the early 10s, uh, 2010, 11, 12, somewhere in there. Uh, so we know how, how sad that is for the customers, for the makers, for the people who, uh, you know, have businesses with Close to My Heart. So we're very sad to see that go. But it really sparked a conversation in the bigger scrapbooking community, like, who scrapbooks anymore? Is scrapbooking dead? Do people scrapbook? You know, where do you get scrapbook products? And that question of, does anybody scrapbook anymore? Well, we do. <laughs> we really, really do. And, you know, the 40,000 people in our Facebook group, the 22,000 people that join us on our YouTube channel, the over 20,000 advisors that we have all across the world, uh, we would all say vehemently, we do. We scrapbook. So we know that many of you have reached out to your close to my heart friends and have invited them to join us either by subscribing to the YouTube channel, by uh, joining the blog, subscribing to the blog, subscribing to emails, 
or have invited them here to our virtual crop Facebook group. So we've seen a, an influx of new people lately. So we really want to kind of focus on back to the basics, getting to know CM, and in particular, getting to know what we are most famous for, our incredible albums, because we all know and love them, but some people who might be coming from close to my heart or from other scrapbook manufacturers, they may not be uh, as familiar and may not, you know, kind of get what uh, our CM albums are all about. So I want to spend some time talking about our albums and then we'll talk about our uh, amazing 1000 albums promo. Okay. So we, again, like I said, we, we've been having the, you know, a great time scrapbooking. We do so many things in our virtual crop group. So again, our YouTube friends, if you're watching on YouTube and you haven't already joined the virtual crop Facebook group, that's where a lot of the action happens. And if you are looking for a community to scrapbook with, again, whether you are close to my heart, whether you scrapbook with other products, other, um, you know, other manufacturers, products, that kind of thing, we just want to provide a community for scrapbookers because, you know, as I've often said, there's no right or wrong way to scrapbook. All are welcome here. Uh, we just want to see the idea of memory preservation, memory keeping, and we just want to share ideas. So in the Virtual Crop Facebook group, you can join me here every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Central Time. Every month we have a virtual crop where you get four new free printable sketches and everybody scrapbooks in their own home and shares what they're doing. So you could be scrapbooking in, you know, here in Calgary, Alberta, and somebody is scrapbooking in Melbourne, Australia, and I get to see what they're doing. They get to see what I'm doing. It's an amazing global community that we have here. So monthly virtual crops. We also have monthly album challenges, monthly completed album challenges. And again, this is a fantastic time to be joining the Virtual Crop Facebook group because we're just in the midst of our March album challenge. So to see people flip through their completed scrapbook albums, that in and of itself is going to answer the question, who scrapbooks? We do, all right? Uh, plus we have lots of other things. So we have a worldwide virtual crop where we see examples and contributors from all over the world. We have our NSD and Croptoberfest. We have secret boxes where you, when you purchase the, the great mystery products, uh, they, we have unboxing, live unboxings and links to project booklets and video tutorials. So. We've got you covered. We have so much going on. Uh, we were kind of shocked when, you know, the scrapbook world says, who scrapbooks out there? Well, we do. We do. So raise your hands. If you uh, have been here for a while, we, we encourage you to invite all of your friends to join us. We encourage you to reach out to Close to My Heart and any other scrapbookers that you know so that we can welcome them into the community and scrapbook with them. And before we leave sort of this topic and get into some of the meat of what we're doing today, I know that there's been, and I've seen it, I've seen it in Facebook group comments and things like that. I know that there's been a, a bit of a rumor or a bit of a suggestion that CM was closing the doors and nothing could be further from the truth. I think what has happened, of course, is that when people have heard CTMH, they, you know, if they didn't know that that was close to my heart, they are assuming that it has something to do with CM and they're looking up is CM closing and they're finding, you know, the old uh, articles or old posts about when CM did go bankrupt, uh, you know, way, way back. So we've been back now. The new CM has been back now for 10 years. We are completely profitable. We, 2023 was our best year ever, and we started January, uh, or we started 2024 by kicking off with our best month ever. January 2024 was our highest sales month ever. So, and I mentioned 20,000 advisors doing over 15,000 events globally, and including 6,000 beginner events. So we are welcoming new scrapbookers, not just, you know, not just those of us who have been around a long time, but we are welcoming new scrappers 
all the time through our CM advisors and uh, their beginner events. So in our eyes, scrapbooking has never been more alive, productive, fruitful, exciting, communal based, and just a happy, happy place to be. So we are glad you are here, no matter where you've come from. And we look forward to scrapbooking with you all the time. All right. Okay. So enough about all of that. Again, welcome to everybody. Everyone is welcome. And let's get into talking a little bit about what I have planned for us today. We have just released two new collections, but they're, they're a bit of a twist. So on the farm and denim revival are the two collections that were released just a couple of days ago. And again, we are launching new products all the time. We have an amazing uh, team of designers who are working full time at creating the best and freshest ideas and fun things for you. And myself and our product development team, Sherry Reland, our director, Chris Romy, our product coordinator, we are working so hard to just bring you new stuff all the time. But the On the Farm, we're actually bringing you back because it sold out in record time last year. So we're really thrilled to bring that back. Plus, we have a new take on an old favorite. So I'm going to flip you over so that you can see what's on my table. I'm going to talk quickly about the products. Then, I, as I mentioned, I'm going to give you a fast page formula that's super versatile and can be used with all different kinds of frames. And then we're going to take a look at the albums for Denim Revival and On the Farm. I'm going to actually show you how to load them up because again, I know a lot of people don't understand the strap hinge style of CM album. And then we'll finish off by kind of recapping the promo. Okay. So are you ready? Let's do this. Let me flip you over. I always get my finger in the way there, but oh well. On the farm, denim revival. Let's do some country chic scrapbooking today. I love these kinds of collections. Um, I live in the city, you know, Calgary is a major metropolitan city, but we are surrounded by beautiful, you know, fields and farms and agriculture. And I'm so appreciative of that. And I do have quite a few photos that I can use with on the farm. And then Denim Revival, such a great basic, right? It's a basic in our wardrobes. We reach for those um, you know, worn in, fits like a glove jeans time and time again. And you're going to reach for the Denim Revival collection in the same way. It's going to become a real go-to. Uh, it can work with so, so much. So just a reminder that the On the Farm we launched last spring and the paper pack, the stickers are three pack of stickers with those cute as can be farm animals, uh, the variety map pack and the layered borders. So these are layered borders that you can just add to your pages. All of those products are returning products. So they are the same as last year and, and the, um, the barns and fence, um, border maker cartridge. The frame is new. And then I also wanted to show you, we're going to pull this back at the end of today's episode, but I wanted to show you the updated version or refreshed version of the fantastic on the farm album. Isn't that gorgeous? I love that little scene. That's just Alberta uh, agriculture to me. And I know that, you know, so many places that that would fit right in. Last year we did it in red. This year we've got it in spruce green. So a fabulous upgrade. So we are going to come back to that album in just a couple of minutes. Let me talk about Denim Revival really quick. This is not the same as what we have released in the past. We have had uh, early on in new creative memories, we had a collection called Denim Blues. And then we also had a denim paper pack a couple of years ago that went with a larger collection. But the papers in the denim revival, the pockets and frames that we're going to spend a lot of time talking about, the embellishments, the matte cards, and the stickers, they are all new. So I love that our designers have added a touch of the kind of the neutrals, including, you know, kind of that clay color, beige, and that really lovely dark umber, along with some really fun new patterns and designs and washes. So again, 
fits like a glove, great sort of basic, but these are new designs, new papers, new washes, okay? So you will want to just kind of note that. The album is a bit of a, a revival as well, and I wanna talk really quickly about the album because I've had lots of questions about it. Now this is classic blue book cloth, and we've got navy and white foil faux stitching. And I did mention in my video that I do before every launch to advisors that this is not denim. We've, you know, we've tried to make it look like denim, but years ago, again, we did have a, an actual denim book cloth album and we tried so hard. Sherry was going back through old archives to see if we could find the, um, the supplier who gave us or who sold us the denim book cloth. Uh, it was nowhere to be found. We scoured other manufacturers and suppliers. We could not find anything that was even close to a denim type of book cloth. So we've gone with one of our favorite blues, classic blue, just like classic blue jeans. And uh, this, so this is not denim, but it has that gorgeous classic blue color with the faux foiled stitching. So just to be clear about the album, it is not denim as we have had in the past. Okay, so let's talk about some frames because that's really the fun thing about these two collections. So first of all, with the On the Farm, we have this great extra large layered frame embellishment. And I hope that you can see, I hope that the camera picks up that this is already layered for you so that when you place it on one of your, your papers, you know, really, pop that on one of the uh, six by four photo behind it. It's gonna be a great look all on its own. But I'm gonna show you an easy formula that you can use with this style of extra large frame. You can use it with this style of frame. You can even use it with our frame punches. Remember we talked about the uh, spring leaves frame punch and we made some frames. So we're going to talk about a variety of different frames that you could use with it, but it's a great versatile formula. Okay, so let me put some of this aside. We're going to come back to these fun pockets. Aren't these the cutest? They are actual working pockets. You can actually put things in them, but we're going to talk about how the pockets could be integrated into the fast frame formula in just a minute. So let me move that aside and let's talk about um, which papers I might use here. So again, as I mentioned, you know, something like that looks great. Most of these papers will look great with any of the frames, except for a couple of the more uh, busy types of patterns, okay? So remember that on the back, we've got lots of great tonals, but we've got some other patterns that might work well as well. Uh, this is the kind of the tiny dot that, or not dot, tiny floral, kind of a ditzy floral. That would work really well as with the back with the, um, with the yellow. I love it on the plaid. I didn't think I would, but I think that looks great. Very down home. And same with the gingham pattern on the back. The chicken wire would be great, as would the gray sort of, um, almost like a ticking stripe on the back there. Uh, I don't know that I love it with the animal hide. I think it gets a little lost, but of course it would go great with the wood grain on the back side. So all of these papers would work. I think I'm going to lean into these three papers to show you um, this fast formula. So we're gonna need one base page. So I think I'm gonna use the green. The green on green, you know, you don't really see a lot of contrast so it doesn't really stand out but I'm going to use the red chickens and the yellow floral and we're going to make just two pieces and that's going to create the base that we're going to use and we're going to see in all of our examples today. Okay so what you need is an 11 by 7 and a 12 by 4. An 11 by 7 and a 12 by 4. So let's go ahead and cut a seven inch piece here. You'll notice that this does have a bit of a directional pattern. I don't want my chickens to be upside down or sideways. So I'm gonna cut this way so that I can have an 11 by seven inch piece. Okay, 
So let's cut it at seven. Got a nice big chunk to use with something else. And then I'll just come around here and trim it down to 11. And I'll put these measurements in one of the comments, but we need that 11 by seven. And I promise this is gonna work with lots of different frames. So I'm gonna give you some examples. And then I think I'm gonna use this yellow for my 12 by four. And again, I'm just kind of checking the direction. It's quite a, an all over random pattern. So I'll just go ahead and cut four inches off and save this for something else. So that's really all of our cutting. Let me put my trimmer away. And this is what we're gonna do. We are going to set our base page down. We're gonna take our 11 by seven and we're gonna look for just you know a half inch down from the top and a half inch in from the side. So let's go ahead and adhere that. This is gonna be a super quick formula and a really versatile formula. So we're gonna talk about that too after I get these two pieces down. Just make sure I'm kind of centered there. So I'm gonna look half an inch in, half an inch down. So I just kind of use the corner of my page to see if I'm in the right spot. That looks pretty good. You can also use the, um, the design that's on the base page too. In this case, it's like a little check, so that kind of helps. And then we're gonna put the 12 by four right underneath it. So you can't get much easier than that. We've got two pieces of paper. And when we put this underneath, it should be about half an inch up from the edge. So it kind of looks like we have a frame and then a, a bar over top of it or a band over top of it. But again, 11 by seven, 12 by four. So now let's, let's look at this base before we do anything else to it. So we have a horizontal base. So this is going to be the perfect spot for that horizontal frame. But if you have a vertical frame, and I'm just going to, oh, I didn't even bring the picture in here. Let me see if I can get it really, really quickly. Sorry, bear with me. There we go. Uh, if you have one of our other vertical frames, like the Sweet On You or the Beautiful Sydney Scenes, those are two of the other extra large framed embellishments that we have. You can very easily use those uh, in this orientation. So I'm gonna be using my, my base page in this orientation, but of course you can turn it uh, either way. You could also put your frame near the bottom, Okay, or you could turn it this way and have your vertical frame this way. Okay, so again, it's going to be really versatile. So I've already mentioned that I'm going to put my um, frame here, and these frames are sized for, for four by six or six by four photos. So you can imagine that I'm just going to attach that here, and for right now, we'll just kind of move it so that it's just overlapping a little bit. Now I have this 12 by four inch band and I can get three photos down here. So I can get three, three and a half square photos down here. And all of a sudden I've got four photos on my layout in a very simple orientation. But again, this is going to work for lots of different frames and it's going to work for a few different tweaks to make it a little bit different, uh, you know, a little bit different look, okay? So that's how I would kind of organize using the extra large farm embellishment. And then of course we could do a few different things. We could come in here and I would probably put my, my title right in here. So, you know, maybe it's gonna be something like Home on the Range. So I can add my title right on here. I could even do some of my journaling on here because of that light background. I could also put my title up here and then maybe, you know, maybe I'm gonna have my, I'm gonna add to the scene and put my, you know, a few embellishments here. But how quickly that would come together with your base page, two pieces of paper and your frame. And you've got a layout that has four photos on it. So talk about a quick and easy fast formula type of layout. I could also, uh, you know, depending on 
the look that I was going for. Maybe I'll pull one of these. I could add a border across the bottom. You know, maybe I would just overlap it and do something like that. So very versatile, very easy to adapt to whatever you're working with. Okay, so now speaking of adapting, let's just move the on the farm frame layout just over here. And let's talk about something with denim revival. So here I've done pretty much the same thing with just one of those little tweaks that I was talking about. So I have a base, I have 11 by seven, and then instead of a 12 by four, I've actually sort of divided my 12 by four into three four by four squares. So I get the same kind of look. And of course, I can put my three by five square photos there. Now, if I didn't have a frame, I could easily use this layout to add a couple of vertical photos. And then all of a sudden I would have, you know, five photos on a single page layout. And I think even you can see that you could carry this over and get, you know, a total, let me see if I've got any more of my little, my little things. I don't, but you could have three by five, three by five. So six, three by fives, two, four by sixes and a six by four. So you could get nine photos on a double page spread if you decided to do something like that. Okay. So that's an easy way to kind of replicate that. And just the fact that I'm incorporating a few more paper patterns makes this a little bit more interesting, but let's turn this sideways and let's bring in some of our fun, little pockets and frames. So this is a, a little bit of a different type of embellishment pack for us. Uh, this features four frames. Let me get them out. So you've got two frames that work with a four by six or six by four, right? So you can see that they can, they can go either way. All right. And then we've got um, a photo that has a space for kind of a, a three by three. You could put that over top of a four by four, uh, three and a half by three and a half, but the opening is a three inch circle. And then this one, which is a fun little sort of Polaroid frame, which will fit uh, just under three and a half by three and a half. So I think at the official measurements of the frame opening are two and three quarters by three. So four great frames that you could work with here. So how about we do something like this? I like the idea of picking up some of these colors that I've added over here. And I think I'll do a vertical photo. And then let's add some of these fun pockets. Now I mentioned that there's six of them and they all work. They all are actual pockets that you can put a, a card, a tag, a photo into. There are a couple that actually have like a little flap. So here's my take on these. Of course, they're going to look great on your, your layouts and you can put your page protectors over top of them. But if you wanted these to become an interactive element, I would consider uh, actually attaching this on the outside of my page protector, because that way then I could open up the little flap and pull out whatever I decide to tuck inside. Okay. But I'm actually just going to use them as a little bit of a decorative look. So I'm just going to tack this down and instead of photos, I'm going to put my three little pockets here. And I love that look and I could still put photos in them or let's get our embellishment pack because there's some fun ones here. I could put a little tag, just kind of tuck that in behind. We've got some cards, bingo card, and I could actually put that inside if I wanted to. Okay. And then I could maybe leave the top one blank. And then I could come along with my stickers and decorate up the pockets. So I love these little flowers. So maybe I would take the three colors that I've got kind of in the background there and emphasize them. Sorry, I'm just getting them pulled off here. I don't want to rip them. So maybe I do something like this, put one little sticker on this pocket and that kind of pulls the, the dark ground down. Maybe I'll put uh, kind of that craft oatmeal sort of color, maybe here, no, maybe up here. I like that. 
and maybe just kind of overlapping. And then maybe something in here from a mid-tone. Oh, how about this fun blue star? I could put something like that there. So just decorating up those fun little pockets. Now I could put a photo inside and just have it kind of you know, peeking out. So this measures, for example, two and three quarters by just over three. So again, I could tuck a photo in here and just have the top peeking out. So something like this, I still have some room. I could still put a couple of photos down here. And I'm always, you know, really excited and uh, happy to kind of reuse different sizes. So maybe that's not what I want. Maybe I want a four by a six by four down here, or maybe even I'll go with a couple smaller ones. A three and a quarter by three and a quarter would fit. Or a five and a five and a half by three and a half, something like that. So again, that base with just the 11 by seven and the 12 by four, or in this case, three four by fours, gives you lots and lots of different opportunities. But I love how it creates a big space here that you can use the frame with and really show off the frame. And so again, hopefully some of those tips about picking out your, um, your colors, your papers, uh, will be helpful. And you can use the on the farm frames or any of the other collections that have frames. If you haven't used all of your um, secret box number one from this year, that had some beautiful frames in it, the Copper Canyon. So that would be gorgeous. So I love how that really makes one of your photos stand out. And then you still have room for a bunch of little supporting uh, photos or in this case the these embellishments these pockets are just so stinking cute I'm gonna have to get another pack just so I can have more pockets but I do like the idea of having some additional frames as well if I got an extra packet then I could do two frames and I could actually make both of the frames the same so lots of different options there but the denim frames and pockets embellishments is definitely something that's a lot of fun. Now, I think I would probably finish this off with, um, with a title. We've got lots down here. You know, it might be something like denim style. I like how that would pull in some of these great tones. Probably put my, um, you know, a kind of an embellishment cluster up here with some layered stickers or layered embellishments. These are fun, kind of these little embroidered ones. So maybe I would do something like that. Or maybe have the heart just kind of over top. So that would be a great little, um, a great little cluster. And again, if you're always struggling with clusters, remember a few weeks ago, we had the no fail embellishments cluster uh, formula. And we even have a couple of little pockets pocket design stickers, right? Pocket full of sunshine. And then on the map cards, we also have some fun little pockets. So again, pocket full of sunshine, that would be a cute title to cut out. And, you know, oh, happy day. So there's lots and lots of fun pocket themed embellishments that you can use. And I did notice that some of the large, um, Matte cards, they also look like frames. So again, popping a photo on there. If I wanted the little denim strips to show, I would actually just grab my X-Acto knife and I would just slit right down here. And then I would just tuck the corner of my photo behind those little slits that I've made. Okay, I don't know if I need to go something smaller than four by six. Yeah, maybe the maybe the three and a half by five and a half that we were working with might work. So just kind of tucking that inside, I could get a great framed look. I'd have to adjust my size, but you get the idea. I could get a great framed look just from that variety mat part. Okay, so frames, 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 on the farm frame, denim pockets and frames, those are going to work great with that fast frame.
frame a formula. Seven, sorry, 11 by seven, 12 by four. Let's look at one other way that we could do that because of course we have these physical frames, but we also talked a few weeks ago when Birds and Blossoms uh, launched, we talked about our frame punches and how we can actually create frames for our photos. So here I started, again, I'll try to remember to put the link to that video in the description. But here I started with a six by eight piece of paper. And after I punched around it as a frame, it's a perfect frame for a four by six. Uh, but of course you could also do three and a half by five and a half. So I could take that same idea. Let's do one here with birds and blossoms. So I've got that fun sort of the robin's egg behind as my base. And I actually just gutted it, okay? So that I could use the brown for some additional photo mats. Then I have the 12 by four in the blue. I have the 11 by seven, seven by 11 from the green leaves. And then I had a six by eight frame that I, or a rectangle that I started with and used the frame punch. Now, do you remember how to use the frame? The frame is on the base. There's, it's not really alliteration, but a frame base. Ace, okay, and then um, the idea of border and front has the O sound. So start on the base, start the silver lines on the base whenever you want to make a frame. Okay, so that's again a great little way. We'd have to go a little bit smaller, but now we can even frame up some of our small. Lost my other one. Here it is. So we can frame up or mat our small little three and a quarter inch, and then we can pop a four by six or a three and a half by five and a half there. So again, same basic formula, but just a little bit of a different uh, feel, a little bit of a different orientation, okay? Um, and again, we can always do it this way as well. And obviously we would look at our patterns on our paper for that. Now you might be wondering what frame punches do we have? So beside the spring leaves, we've got, and I don't think these are in any particular order, we've got the dollop arch frame, which has kind of nice, almost like an embroidery sort of edge. We've got the fan favorite, the geometric frame punch that creates a real fantastic angular design. We've got the beautiful damask flourish, which again came out with silver and gold creates a stunning, uh, intricate look when you use that. And we've got the fun spider webs frame. So, and I've seen some great ideas using the spider webs frame for non Halloween, um, layouts. So don't just think because it's spider webs that, you know, you need to only use it. So you've got a ton of frame options. So we've got the, on the farm, we've got the denim revival. We've got Sydney scenes. We've got sweet on you. You might still have some of the back to school extra large frames. We've got a variety of frame punches still in stock. Plus we've also done other frames. Snowflake frame was a, a, a really popular one, for example. So think about frames in a little bit of a different way. And then think about how you can use this frame fast formula. Last thing I'll mention is, of course, even if you don't have a frame, you know, whether it's a, a pre-made frame or a frame punch, a double matted photo uh, can really stand out on a layout like this as well. So it's a great little fast formula to have in your back pocket and pull out, you know, whenever you need it. Let's just see what we could finish off with this birds and blossoms. I love this pack, our spring, uh, gorgeous spring collection. So we've got a few different little um, journal cards. You know, I would think even sticking one kind of down in the corner to use as your journaling would be great. There's the little birds again. And then, of course, all of the different embellishments. So uh, again, with anything like the borders, you could put them on either side or you could, you know, just put it 
on the top edge. That really makes a really nice sort of um, focal point for your border there. And then in terms of smile, or in terms of, I'm seeing, you know, smiling, but uh, in terms of titles, there's lots of different ones. So, I mean, you could do something like You Are My Sunshine. You could do something like Fresh Blooms, you know, pop that along the corner down here. That would be lovely. Uh, and of course, Spring, that's going to get lost on the green, but that would work really nicely as well. So what, whatever collection you're using, you, you've got so many different options when you think about having a main photo in some kind of frame and then three supporting photos using this little formula. Okay. All right. So I'm going to clear off all of this and we're going to come back just like I promised to our albums. Let me clear my mess, get all of my, and like I said, I will put the uh, measurements back in the comments. But again, hopefully you remember two pieces, really easy, 11 by 7, 12 by 4. And then you can always do some of the other things that we've talked about. Okay, so let's, let's use the beautiful spruce green on the farm album to to talk about our albums because I want to spend a few more minutes on that talking specifically about them as I've said many of our new friends may not be familiar with our strap hinge albums now albums are what creative memories is known for it's what started the company all those years ago we have proprietary uh, album making equipment they're made in the USA in our Sock Rapids warehouse they have a lifetime warranty they're the best albums on the market in terms of archival quality. And advisors or fans of CM albums who have been using them for, you know, 40, 35, 40 years have, you know, said that they have kept their, they look as good today as they did, you know, on the day they made them. They won't crack or warp under regular conditions. They are just the best way to keep those beautiful pages that you're making uh, safe and uh, ready for generations to come to look at them. So when you get your album, you know, if you've used post album, post bound albums before, you might, this might look kind of familiar to you, but if you've used three ring binder style uh, albums, this might be very, very different for you. So when you get your album, it's going to come to you with this I just have the sticker from the uh, wrapping, but it's going to come with this sort of thick cardboard piece in between to hold it, you know, at the right sort of depth, I guess. So you're just going to take that out and you're going to, let's just have a look at the inside. Now, when you open it flat, you're going to see these two plastic inserts and you're going to see these two straps. Notice that Along the front side, it's shorter. You have lots of strap at the back, very little at the front. So that's a good reminder that we work from the back. So let's load in a few pages. So first of all, I'm just going to take off the spine. And we have custom spines. You can have your spine printed. It, we have all kinds of things. But anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. Just set your spine away, aside, okay? And then we're going to open this back up and it's going to look kind of funny. Now we're going to unbuckle it just like we're unbuckling a belt. So we're going to feed the strap. And again, we're working from the back side. We're going to feed the strap back through the plastic insert. Okay. And then pull it out. And then we're going to pull off that back cover and we're going to set it aside just like this. Don't flip it over. Don't turn it around. Don't put it down over this way. Just keep it open just like you just took it off and just set it off to the side. All right. And then we're also going to take off the one back cover. And again, just set it aside exactly as you took it off. Don't flip it over. Don't do anything else. Just set it aside exactly as you took it off. That will make it so easy for you to put it back together. Okay. Let's talk about some page options because again if you haven't used a CM album before it might seem a little bit different 
Now we offer what we call our album refill pages. Now these are made with something called jeeping. So they have these kind of extra thick edges that make it really nice and sturdy. And you'll see that there is a tiny little staple that's manufactured right into the side. And the staple is what holds the, uh, the page in place. The staple or the strap goes through the staple. The staple goes on the strap. Okay. Now with our white pages, we actually have other colors as well, but we're just going to talk about white today to keep it, to keep it easy. Uh, you can actually scrapbook directly on these, the pages themselves, photo safe, archival, acid free, lignin free, buffered, all of that good stuff. These are not going to do anything to affect the quality of your, um, your uh, photos. It's not going to help them deteriorate or anything like that. Perfect base for your photos. So if you are the type of scrapbooker that likes to scrapbook right on white cardstock, you can scrapbook right on these and you can scrapbook on both sides. So if that's your jam, do it. So let's go ahead and load. I've got six pages. The white pages actually come in a 16 pack and they come with page protectors. So after I get these loaded up, we'll talk about page protectors. So let's go ahead and just put them on. I'm just gonna line up all my staples. I'm gonna flip them over and I'm gonna put the straps through the staples. So that's one basic type of pages that I offer, or that we offer. And as I said, I'm gonna put the page protectors just off to the side, I will come back to them. Now, the other kind of pages with, that we offer you might be a little bit more familiar with. These are top loading pocket pages. So you can see that they'll come to you with an insert, with a cardstock insert that just slips down inside kind of like an open top envelope. Okay. Again, the cardstock that's inside is acid free, lignin free, buffered, photo safe, all the rest of it. And you can either scrapbook directly on this or you can take another color. Let me, let me just grab another color here. Maybe you like to scrapbook on black. So maybe you're going to just slip your black right inside there. Or maybe you like to scrapbook on some of those, those beautiful pattern papers that we were talking about. So whatever you like to scrapbook on, you can just slip it into the pocket pages. So I've got three of those. I'm just going to line those up again. Same little thing, jeeping on the interior with the staple, and I'm just going to feed my strap through them. Now, before I go into the other page uh, type that I want to share with you, um, you can interchange these. So if you like, some people like to have you know one or the other completely in their album. So they have either uh, you know album pages or pocket pages. I like to intersperse them. I, I've got different things in different albums. But if you are used to scrapbooking with a pocket page, uh, if you are used to scrapbooking a variety of different events and then adding the pages into your albums, the pocket pages will work well for you. If you are more of a chronological scrapbooker, the refill pages will work well for you because then you can just go ahead and just keep flipping through scrapbook directly on the pages. You don't have to take them out of your album and you can just keep going through. If you're like me and you're all over the place with your scrapbooking, then fill up your albums with the pocket pages and then you can move your layouts around when they're done just by putting them in the pockets. Okay. So that's the main difference. Neither are right. It's just totally a matter of preference. And then kind of the other basic that we have that I just love. And again, I love adding these into uh, in between pages, in between pocket pages. These are our multi pocket pages. And you can see that they are divided up and they each of these spots will fit a six by four or a four by six photo. Or remember how we were using those fun little little variety map pack cards. So of course you can intersperse these. So if you loved, you know, um, project life, for example, or if you've done lots of other kinds of pocket page scrapbooking, these are probably uh, something you are familiar with. So again, I'm just going to stack them up and I'm going to feed the strap through the staple. Okay. So 
I also, I also often get asked, how many pages can I put in? And I'm going to give a very unscientific uh, answer. It depends. If you scrapbook flat on your pages, you're going to be able to get a few extra in there. Uh, if you add a lot of layered embellishments or dimensional adhesive, you might kind of fill up your book a little bit earlier. We suggest two packages of 16 refill pages. So that would be about 32 pages, 64 sides. Uh, we definitely know that people uh, add more sometimes. And again, if you are a flat scrapbook, a flat scrapbooker, then you can add more. So I've only got about a dozen in here, but let's go ahead and close this back up. So remember we had our little plastic insert. We took it off like this. We just set it aside. We're going to put that on just like it was a page. Okay. So just like we put our pages on, we flip them over. We put the strap through the staple. This time we're just going to put the strap through the little plastic staple. And then we're not going to flip this over. We're going to place the back cover of our album on just as we did when we were, took it off. Leave it open. I mentioned just keep it off to the side exactly like this. And we're just going to feed the strap right through the hole. Okay, so it's going to look like that. Now we can buckle it back up just like a belt buckle. I don't even wear belts anymore, so I don't even know if it's like a belt buckle anymore. <laughs> but just, just buckle it up. It does not have to be tight. Okay, feed it through the first one and then back up and under through the second one. So I'm just going to show you that before I move on. Okay, so I just fed it through, through the first one and up through the second. Now I'm just going to go ahead and tighten it up. And it looks weird because it's just sitting there. But all I have to do is close my album. And then when I open it up again, it's like magic. The strap just lays nice and flat against the back cover. So that's all there is to it. Now I can go ahead and put my spine back in. Again, works very similarly to a post-bound album. And that's my beautiful Creative Memories album ready to go. One of the things I love most about my Creative Memories albums, of course, besides the fact that they are, you know, the best archival quality, is that they lay flat when they're open. So when I've got those pages in my album, and I'm sorry, I should have brought one of my albums over so I could actually flip through it, but it actually lays open. And when I have a, a two-page spread, I don't have this big gap in between it. It's going to look very seamless. And same when I have you know, even when I go from a refill page to a pocket page, or even when I go from a pocket page to a multi-pocket page. It's nice and flat. It lays open. It's beautiful and easy to, uh, to create. Okay. Now, the last thing I'll show you about the album, I mentioned we will pull out and show you how to uh, add the page protector. And I opened this up, but I didn't pull one out, so they're kind of sticky in there. So you can see that they're just made out of the same material, polypropylene, that the um, pocket pages are. And you'll notice that they are sealed on two sides. I hope you can see that. Sealed on that side, sealed on that side, open at the top, open at the bottom. So you're just going to turn it sideways and we're just going to slide it right over the side, and I know that's going to feel weird to some of you, we're just going to slide it right over the side, and you'll get used to this, but you're just going to feed it onto your page, and it's going to sit right in between the jeeping on the edge, sorry, the jeeping on the edge, and the jeeping in the center. So that's going to protect it, and uh, everything that you've got on your page there. So that is kind of uh, our CM album 101. So you can be assured that all of the work that you do for your beautiful pages will last. And it's going to last and it's going to look beautiful right inside our albums. Okay? So let me just chat with you and finish up our hour together here by 
reminding you and kind of giving you the details now about our thousand albums promo. So we are excited to get a thousand albums out there into your hands, whether you are a new customer to uh, Creative Memories, whether you're coming to us from close to my heart or another manufacturer, maybe you've been looking for different albums. We are so excited for you to try our albums that when you make a qualifying purchase, we are going to drop one of our mystery albums into your order. Absolutely free. So uh, my colleagues in Minnesota, of course, I'm in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. They are in, we're in the warehouse today. Uh, our product director, Sherry Reeland, and our product coordinator, Chris Romy. They were going through boxes and pulling out, you know, a variety of maybe discontinued albums, albums that, you know, maybe we didn't have a full run of book cloth for, uh, the, the last few, you know, the last chance type of albums that we didn't have enough to keep selling them because we didn't want to sell through. All of those great albums that, you know, you are going to be so excited to see end of promo runs, all that kind of stuff. So they were going through and they were just saying, Oh, I remember this album. This one's such a good one. Someone's going to be so excited to see this. So we are limiting the free albums to one per account. And of course you won't know which beautiful album that you're going to get. So I would recommend that after you finish off watching me here and joining me here in a couple minutes when we're done, you head over to your Creative Memories website. So if you're in the States, creativememories.com, creativememories.ca in Canada, and creativememoriesau.com in Australia. And you'll see all of the details. You'll see the amount for your qualifying purchase and uh, all of the details there. So it is one per account and it is while supplies last. And you're gonna to wanna to watch the Facebook uh, page, the CM Facebook page. And I think we're gonna show it in the Facebook group too. And we'll kind of give you a, a sense of when we are running low on that. But we are so excited to get these albums into your hands so that you can experience creative memories quality and just love, come to love our albums as much as we do, okay? So the promo is live now. And again, as I said, it will go until those thousand albums uh, have all gone off to their, their new home. So, you know, I think coming back to what I said at the beginning, you know, when we talk about who scrapbooks anymore, we do. And we are so confident in our products and in our advisors and in our community that we know we're going to be scrapbooking for a long, long time. And we can't wait to welcome more and more and more people experienced scrapbookers and beginner scrapbookers alike into our community because it's so welcoming. It's such a wonderful community, full of inspiration, full of, you know, support and encouragement. And if you have a question, you just hop right on in and someone will be answering it for you. So who scrapbooks? We do. And we can't wait for you to join us. So I also want to make uh, one other little kind of not plug, but, you know, I just want to tell you that we really are so confident in what Creative Memories offers. We decided to create our own little sort of viral video that talks about all of these milestones we've reached and all of the things that we're doing. So I have included that link to the video in the description box. So if you're watching on Facebook, you're going to want to look in the description box above this post for the video uh, link. And if you're watching on YouTube, you're going to look in the description box below this video. And you're going to see it right on the front page uh, or the first, you know, it'll be the first video on the Creative Memories YouTube channel. And we'd love for you to share it with somebody who's, you know, wondering what they're going to do when their beloved close to my heart, uh, you know, wraps up their operations, I think, I think within the next month or a month or two. Um, but yeah, please make sure that you're sharing that we are a welcoming community. We would love to have them join us and please, uh, you know, invite them to come along and be part of our, of our scrapbooking world. Okay. So whew, I've got, to, I think I've got through everything that was on my list. I will make sure to go back into the comments and just jot down those uh, measurements for the two pieces for the fast, uh, fast page frame type of formula. And I invite you to join me next week, whether, you know, whether you're, whether you've been joining me, you know, since we started this about a year and a half ago, or whether you're brand new, 
every Wednesday, 5 p.m. Central, right here on the YouTube channel and in the Facebook uh, Virtual Crop Facebook group. I'm here and I'm excited to share more with you each and every week. So you never know what we're going to do. You might have something brand new next week. You never know. But I encourage you to join me. And again, we're so excited to have all of our new friends. And I can't wait to see you again next week. So until then, happy shopping. I hope you get one of the thousand free albums. And I hope you love it as much as we do. So have a great week. Thanks for spending your time with me today. And keep on scrapbooking. All right. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye for now.